Imagine a box with a square base has a length plus girth of 104. Now, before we go on, some of you might be like, girth? What is that? It's like Girth Brooks or something like that? No, no, no. Um, this is a dimension that's often very important uh, for like mailing and logistics and things like that. Like if you went to take your back, if you took a package to like UPS or uh, uh, FedEx or some of these other companies, they might measure the girth of the box, right? So the girth is the distance around the box. So if we have, so we have a box with a square base. So let's start off with that. So we have like some square base. Whoops square base, and then some height to it. We don't necessarily know what that is yet. The bottom is a square. And maybe, maybe I'll add some little dashes here so that you feel like this is transparent now. Something like this. So we have this square base. So let's say it's X by X right there. And then the height is something which we'll call it Y for the moment. So when I talk about the girth of this thing, you're asking like how far around, how far around, it's the distance around the box. So, and they always pick the largest one. So it's like, if you went around, take your measuring tape and went around this, this is what we're talking about with the girth. It's like the perimeter of the other dimension. So you have a length, right? You have a length and then the girth will be the perimeter around the box uh, that's perpendicular to that length. All right. So this is often, like I said, this is often used for, for shipping cost, right? If you're mailing something, the girth matters. Um, it's not just mass or volume. If you have a really long thing that has a huge girth, then of course that's going to be calculated in the volume or in the, in the shipping cost there. So what is the length of the box if the volume is supposed to be uh, 2100 cubic inches. So what do we understand about this problem so far? So volume makes sense to us, right? We're talking about the length of the box. Uh, what should the length of the box be if the volume is going to be 21 and a, uh, 2100 cubic inches? So volume is supposed to equal 2100 cubic inches, but the volume is also equal to length times width times height. And so without label, you know, without saying which one is which, right? I have a square base. I have a length Y here. This is going to be equal to X squared Y. It's just some variables I introduced into the problem. You could call them different things if you want to. It doesn't really matter as long as it's very clear to you what these variables mean. And a picture can be a very useful thing to illustrate what do we mean by these, these dimensions here. So, okay. So that's, that's the volume. So we have to, but we have two variables. How do you deal with the two variables? Well, that's where the first sense comes into play. So first of all, since the base is a square, that helped us out a lot, knowing that the length, uh, that the width and the height were the same number here. Although I've oriented so the length looks like the height, whatever. You can always rotate the box. And, but we also know that the length plus the girth is equal to 104. So we have that 104 is equal to the length, right? The length, let's call that, that's the longest side on our box. The length is going to be Y plus the girth, the girth here, if we go with the longest side, the girth would be how much we go around it like that. So that's gonna be X plus X plus X plus X. So our girth would turn out to be four X right here. And so we can use this to substitute, uh, whoops, we can use this to substitute, I'm just gonna draw the girth back there. We can use this to substitute out one of the variables here. So looking at this equation, it has two variables, X squared and Y here. Um, we could solve for y. That would actually be pretty cheap. Uh, and y equals 104 minus 4x. We could then substitute that in there. That would be great. I like that approach because then our equation would look like 2100 is equal to x squared times 104 minus 4x. That gives me a cubic polynomial equation I could try to solve. If you went the other way around, though, if you try to solve for x, you would get x equals instead 104 minus y over 4. That has a fraction. That already gives me some issues. And then you have to plug it in there for the x squared. So you have to square the fraction. I think solving for y is going to be a much, much more economical approach to this one here. And so we try to solve this equation for x. We need to multiply out the right-hand side. So that's going to give us 104 x squared minus 4 x cubed. This equals 2100. Um, if we then move, then we subtract the 2100, we're going to get negative 4, 4 x cubed plus 104 x squared minus 2100 is equal to zero. And personally, I like 
when my leading coefficient is positive. In fact, actually all of those numbers, 104 and 2100 are divisible by four. So to make life much easier for us, we're just gonna divide both sides by negative four. And this then gives us the equation, x cubed minus, uh, let's see, four goes in there, how many times? Uh, yeah, yeah, 104 is divisible by four, that should be 26. So we have negative 26 x squared. And then let's see, you're gonna get, 2100. Well, it's, you know, if you're ever trying to do these calculations by hand, you know, things you want to look for is like 2100 is 21 times 100. Four goes into 100, of course, 25 times. So you're stuck with 21 times uh, 25, which is not the worst calculation in the world. Uh, we could probably do it if we had to, but you're going to end up with 525 equals zero. And of course, you don't have to be a hero. You can use a calculator uh, to help you out here. It's not a big deal whatsoever. So we need to solve this equation. I'm going to try to do it by factoring. Can I find factors of negative 525 that would work here? In which case, I mean, some of them I know immediately. I mean, 525 is 21 times 25, right? Uh, so we could try some of those numbers. Uh, both both of them kind of seem a little too big for me, right? I'll try something something a little bit smaller. I mean, look at 525. Clearly, that's divisible by 5 since the last digit is 5. If I tried synthetic division with 5, what would I see there? 1, negative 26. Don't forget the 0. Negative 525. If you try dividing by 5 here, bring down the 1. You get 5, right? Which negative, 20, negative 26 plus 5 is negative 21, uh, which we get right there. For which case, you're going to get 5 times negative 21. Uh, that's equal to, let's see, negative 105. Bring, uh, add that to 0, you get negative 105. Then if you times that by 5, that's where you're going to get this negative 525 from, uh, for which then you get 0 right there. So 5 was actually a pretty good guess to start off with. So we end up with x minus 5 times the quadratic x squared minus 21x minus 105, like so, equals 0. We can continue to try to factor this thing. Um, factors of 125 that add up to be 20. Uh, those those kind of seem like big numbers for me. I might try the I might try the discriminant approach here, right, to see if this can be factored. The discriminant, remember, is b squared minus 4ac. For which case, if we take 21 squared, you get 441. And then you're going to add to that four times. 105, which is 420, which when you add that to 441, that gives you 861. And we want to take the square root of that. Uh, that's a irrational number. It gives you about 29 something, right? So if you continue with the quadratic formula, you would get 21 plus, you know, again, approximately approximately 29.3 over 2, which if we try to compute that together, that's giving us something like approximately 25, we'll say 25.2 uh, inches. So just because we have an irrational solution does not mean that this isn't feasible, right? It could be a potential answer, right? Um, so we discovered here 5 worked, and we have also like this plus 25 uh, the other one would turn out to be negative. So if you took the negative choice there, that would give you something negative. So we're looking around 5 or perhaps 25. So let's come back and see which of these actually seem reasonable. I perfectly like the answer of 5, right? Because um, that's that's a nice whole number there. And if you check this out here, if you take 5 times 5, what would be the length in that situation? We'll come back to this formula right here. Uh, this one right here. If we were to take 104 minus 4 times 5, 4 times 5 is 20, uh, and so that would give us 84. So the length uh, is supposed to be 84 inches, and then the base is supposed to be 5 inches. So we're looking at something that, that looks like eight or 84 by 5 by 5, which that does give us 2100 uh, volume, 84 times 25 is 2100. So that seems feasible. And then with the with the girth, we found out that works out. So uh, five inches, uh, uh, this these dimensions right here do seem very feasible. The length being uh, 84 inches seems quite, seems quite fine. The other possibility we still have to consider would be if X was approximately 25.2, which 
which admittedly, if you times that by four, that gives you about, it gives you about 100.7 you know, or something like that. I, I'm rounding, of course. For which case, if you subtract that from 104, that is an acceptable girth. And that gives you, that gives you a length that's going to be about four inches, right? That's, that is a possibility, uh, which I'm going to, I'm going to throw this one out from considerations because not because I don't like it, uh, but mostly when you look at the story problem, it doesn't seem to make any sense for the following reason. When it comes to measuring the girth of a box, like I said, the length is for the shipping purposes, the length is the longest dimension of the object and the girth is in the perimeter around the other the other way. So that's why I drew my box the way I did. The length was the longest dimension and the girth has to be something like that. So in order for this, uh, this second model to work, we would have to have the X coordinate be, the, the X value have to be 25, so it's like 25 by 25 and then the other one's about four or something like that. Irrationality is not the problem here. Uh, the issue is that that doesn't match up with what girth means. The length should be the longest dimension. So if we want y to be bigger than x, I guess that's what I'm trying to say here, is that in order to get the answer, there's sort of like this subtle inequality in the background. x needs to be less than or equal to y. In order for that to hold, we have to throw out this possibility. And this then gives us that our box is 84 by 5 by 5.